It's Monday, 30th of July, and you're back in business with me, Harsha Subramaniam. India has a new president, so is it time now for the government to roll up its sleeves and kick in the much expected reforms and kickstart growth? And is it time for the Reserve Bank of India to be cutting interest rates? Joining us to discuss all these macro issues, Jerry Rao, Chairman Value Budget Housing Corporations, now joins me. Jerry, many thanks for joining us. We're talking at a time when uh, India's growth has slowed down and there are pressures on the fisc. What is your own assessment of growth and why do you think we've slowed down? I am quite pessimistic. I have a feeling that there's a very good chance that our growth rate can actually drop below 5%. We assumed that the UPA would be a pro-growth government. It's turned out to be anything but that. They inherited a very good growth rate, uh, burgeoning fiscal revenues, uh, declining fiscal deficit, a mood of optimism in the country. Um, and uh, the very first act, we should have got, we should have figured it out right then. The first act they did was they shut down the disinvestment ministry. That should have given us a signal that there is going to be a backtracking. Um, and I think a lot of it has been blamed on coalition stuff. I don't buy that. Uh, telecom, for more than almost two years now, there's, there's a, uh, it, it, you know, it's been under the, under the Congress party, and we still don't have a telecom policy. And I think the last budget really gave clear signals that productive entrepreneurial investment activity is, is actually treated with some disdain uh, by our present uh, dispensation. And, uh, you know, if you don't invest this year, your growth rate is bad three years from now. Well, Jerry, you know, th there are clearly two views. One about consumption, that's still fairly robust. If you take a look at the numbers of Levers or Britannia or HDFC Bank. Um, but if you look at the investment spending by corporates, that com that's completely absent. Manufacturing, infrastructure, anything that's closely linked to government policy is not seeing any movement. Are you seeing this dichotomy? There is no dichotomy. This happens all the time. Consumption, you can always pump up. You have a, an inflationary situation. Post Lehman Brothers, we injected a hell of a lot of money into the system, which was the right thing to do. Uh, we did a lot of fiscal incentives, and that has, with a lagged effect, that continues to give you a decent consumption base. But investment is your predictor for future GDP. So right now, because of past uh, fiscal or monetary uh, conditions, we are, with a lag, seeing decent consumption. Let's not get carried away. I mean, it is, it's not looking good. All right. The, the, the Prime Minister has taken charge of the Finance Ministry. There are expectations that the government will act and act now on reforms, reform measures. Do you see that happening? Quite frankly, I'm not. I, I am uh, quite pessimistic. Uh, I, I, the track record seems to be always to appoint one more committee or to defer matters. Um, and uh, I don't see anything dramatic happening. Uh, and I don't see investors, markets, ordinary citizens getting convinced of the credibility of these reforms. One of the important things, either in 1985 or the 91, 92, uh, Narsimha Rao, Manmohan Singh reforms, was there was some credibility. And therefore, and even then, it took several years I mean, it's not as if our growth rate shot up in 1994. It didn't. It takes a long time. And some of the damage that this current government has done over the last eight years is deep damage. So it's going to take us many years to dig ourselves out of it. And um, I, I am, I'm not very hopeful. Uh, I, I'd like to believe that something nice will happen because as a citizen of India, I'd like our growth rate to go back. But um, as a betting person, one should say there will be one more deferral, one more committee appointment, uh, one more uh, uh, statement of optimism from uh, uh, economic advisors, planning commission members, etc., which we all discount because they've become almost laughably absurd. All right. So what about interest rates, Jerry? Do you expect interest rates to be cut soon? Uh, Corporate India has been asking for it. Inflation has cooled off a wee bit. Do you believe interest rates will head, head south? Well, I am not a votary of lower interest rates. I think our central bank, Reserve Bank of India, is doing the right thing. Um, 
you know, we can create another bubble uh, for a short two or three quarters by dropping interest rates and um, create more problems uh, going forward. We are stuck in a classic uh, declining growth rate, high inflation rate situation. They're doing the right thing by hold, keeping interest rates up. Unfortunately, they need support from the fiscal side, which is not coming. So uh, you're trying to fight a battle with one hand tied behind you. Um, I am not at all in favor of a cut in interest rates, and I hope it doesn't happen. I don't think it will. By and large, uh, our independent institutions in this country, like the Reserve Bank of India, have been homes of sobriety, common sense, uh, and I think they will continue to maintain that. What about the rupee, Jerry? You know, it's fallen about 20% in the past four or five months. Uh, it's stabilized a wee bit right now. But has the volatility affected the decision-making of corporate India? Do you think the Reserve Bank of India could have managed this, this volatility better? There's two separate issues. One is the absolute depreciation, which I think is the best thing that has happened. So the depreciation, in my opinion, is a good thing. It was inevitable. Um, we have got a huge current account deficit, which is financed by capital account inflows, and we did our best in the last budget to discourage capital account inflows. Not only in the last budget, in the last three, four years, the way we've dealt with Ken Vedanta transaction, the way we've dealt with POSCO, all of these we've done our best to uh, discourage foreign investment, and therefore a, a, a depreciation of the rupee was inevitable. It's good. I think it'll help some exporters. Uh, it'll certainly put some brakes on import-led consumption. Now, as far as volatility is concerned, when Corporate of India complains, I think they're not complaining so much about volatility. They're complaining about absolute depreciation um, because a lot of them bothered in foreign currency, thinking this would never happen, and foreign currency interest rates were low. Now, you do these kind of uh, silly things on your balance sheet, you have to pay a price for it. You cannot assume that you can borrow in foreign currency at a low interest rate and not face the risk of depreciation, devaluation. So it's really a largely self-inflicted problem by several Indian corporates encouraged by irresponsible bankers. All right, let's talk about a sector that's close to you uh, right now, uh, Jerry, is real estate. What is your own outlook on prices, specifically in the, in the affordable housing segment that you operate in? It's again pretty bad. I mean, let me, I'm sorry to sound uh, uniformly kind of pessimistic on your show. Um, I've been now in this business a little more than two years and kind of studied it fairly extensively. And net-net, the conclusion I've come to is that the government of India, as well as all our state governments, are basically anti-poor, anti-middle class. Uh, the entire residential real estate sector is rigged in favor of the rich. Uh, if you or uh, some other wealthy TV anchor like you wants to build a 20,000 square foot farmhouse outside a major Indian metro, you will get approval in 15 days and you can build it in a year's time. Uh, but if I want to use the same uh, two, three acres to build uh, uh, a couple of hundred flats for India's emerging middle class who desperately need housing, it'll take me two and a half years to get approval. And two and a half years when I have to fund the land with my highest source capital, equity capital, so costs keep going up. So it becomes very difficult to sell at an affordable price point. To get to start a small development, you need 35 approvals, um, and each of which is, is sequential, or many of them are sequential. You keep running from the town planning to the collector's office to the panchayat's office. You keep going round and round and round, and it takes forever and ever and ever. Um, and um, there's, no, there's no transparency. There's huge transaction cost incurred, uh, and all this ultimately means the price point offered to the end consumer goes up. Um, added to that is inflation. Selective inflation in the last two years, particularly in cement and steel, has been ridiculous. I mean, we've talked about doubling of cement and steel prices. You're not talking about 7 and 10 percent in, in inflation in these commodities, and they're very key for construction. So it's, it's really going to become more and more difficult for middle class India to own homes unless we do some drastic changes, 
which I am not very optimistic. Well, Jerry, wealth and TV anchors just don't go together. Uh, I can't let you go without, without a quote from Shakespeare that recaptures or your own feeling about the economy right now. <laughs> ah, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but that in us, in, but in us that we are underlings. Cassius says this to Brutus when we try to talk about some extraneous factor uh, keeping us down. No, what keeps Indians down is, as I said, a, a kind of national uh, ability. Every time things are going well for us, uh, when we look really, you know, if you had talked to me four or five years ago, I'd have said, by God, in my lifetime, mass poverty would have disappeared in India. I'm 60. I don't now believe that's going to happen. It might happen uh, in my son or grandson's lifetime. I think we've lost. On that not so optimistic note, Jerry Dao, many thanks for joining. As always, a pleasure talking to you. Find us, follow us on Twitter at Harsha in Business. Thank you for joining us in business today.